was ten years old, there were these places. The woods behind our house, where I could be my feral self. The orchard, where sometimes, if you were very still and very patient, you might catch a glimpse of the ring-necked pheasant. My room, with my collection of seashells, hubcaps I'd scrounged from the side of the road, and Audubon prints. And more sociable, but also feral, the back seat of the car, which I shared with my two brothers. Music on the radio had a kind of civilizing influence on us. There were the places that my mother shopped and shopped and shopped and shopped. Shop, 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 shop. But, quote, only if you are very good. And then there were the places that I read. Places in the books that I read. room, where I was called upon to read out loud. The playground. And then, towering over it all, like Mount Olympus. The monkey bars where my fourth grade crush, Carla, held court. What about the self-confident girl? Guess you really need to be with her. She's so clever and so strong. Well, you really... This crush was obsessive so much so that i had developed a somewhat elaborate fantasy scenario around it it took place along my school bus route in front of a pretty yellow house that i'd selected a wanton motorcycle rider came roaring by knocking over carla who just happened to be walking along the route she wasn't really hurt 
but her cheek was a little abraded by loose gravel. I was then teleported off the bus, and with superhuman strength, I carried her into the house. There was a divan where I gently set her down. Gauzy curtains billowed over her. The sunlight filtered through the window. And I was 10 years old, so it ended there. These thoughts were so secret, so taboo, that I gave the fantasy a code name to reference it more comfortably in my thoughts. Car Car, short for Carring Carla, which is too hard to say anyway. I would rehearse this fantasy over and over in my mind. Clearly, I was caught up in a queer fantasy feedback loop. But then one day, something miraculous happened. After that, of course, I had a lucky outfit. And then, one rainy day, another momentous event. We had recess inside the classroom. I made a bold proposal, because after all, I always beat my little brother. Actually, the first girl, she went down easy. I defeated all comers, even the most formidable. You could say I had a special advantage due to my freakishly long forearms, but then everything escalated. I relish the victory. <sighs> but it wasn't over yet. Terrible. My arms were noodles. There was no way I could even put up a good fight. But the most popular boy in the fourth grade he thought about it, and he says, no, and they asked him why, and he said, I don't want to lose. Now I had some cachet, and not bravado, but real courage. The courage to moon about at the base of the monkey bars. Until finally, it happened. And so, dear viewer, I ascended. I ascended and I felt included, sort of. And then, believe it or not, and I can't quite remember how it came about, but I advanced from the monkey bars to the innermost sanctum of girlhood. Yes, the slumber party. place, interesting things happened. But most importantly, I learned that Carla was not a hit-and-run casualty in my inner queer world. She was a person. So Car Car 
became a thing of the past. I also learned that slumber parties are not my jam. Through it all, I suppose I became a little less feral and a little more socialized. My thanks to Carla, the nicest popular girl that ever was. For some time, however, I would feel more comfortable in the places I had created for myself than among my peers. And sometimes, to be perfectly honest, I still do.